I've heard a lot of people suggest overcoming FOMO with JOMO, joy of missing out. And maybe some people do have the superpower of pulling the wool over their eyes, deluding themselves, and feeling super happy for other successes while they're floundering. But not me. For me, JOMO is a no-go. So I went in search of a more realistic way to fight FOMO. And I think I found it. At least for me, it works way better than JOMO. I'm fighting FOMO with FOMO. My first instinct was to fight FOMO with ignorance. Ignorance about missing out? I ammo? Because you can't fear missing out about something you don't even know about, right? But practically, how do you ignore what everyone else is doing? And actually, as much as I hate FOMO, I actually like knowing what others are up to. It gives me ideas and it motivates me. So thanks to Oliver Berkman's book, 4,000 Weeks, I found a better FOMO fighting approach than ignorance is bliss. The opposite, awareness is bliss. Think about it, as you watch this and I speak to the camera, millions of people are doing way cooler things than us. But even if I had all the money in the world, I wouldn't be able to do it all because there's not enough time. And even if I had all the money and time in the world, doing all these cool things would lose its luster because amusement congeals into boredom. So trying not to miss out is hopeless. But Berkman says we can spin that in a hopeful way. Once you truly understand that you're guaranteed to miss out on almost every experience the world has to offer, the fact that there are so many you still haven't experienced stops feeling like a problem. And what's more, missing out is what makes our choices meaningful in the first place. Deep. But what about people who are prone to making the wrong choices? Isn't that what makes FOMO such a mofo? Yeah, but it's also what makes FOMO kind of fake because psychological research finds that we overestimate the pain of making the wrong choice. You think you'll feel a lot of regret for making the wrong decision, but as long as it's well thought out and doesn't leave you in jail or with an incurable disease, you end up actually feeling a lot less regret than anticipated. How so? Largely because of an incurable habit that we all have. One that Carol Tavris and Elliot Aronson write about in Mistakes Were Made, but Not By Me. Self-justification. Self-justification is our brain's incredible ability to come up with lies. I don't actually regret it. Excuses. I didn't have any choice. I was forced to get it. And confirmation biases. Men's Health says that people with tattoos like this, they do better in bed. To make us feel less bad about our inconsistent selves and imperfect actions. So how can I use this knowledge to overcome FOMO? Make more choices and act on them. This means that when struggling between sticking with the status quo and shaking things up, and both seem like reasonable, meaningful options, get shaken. Because as Cornell's regret expert, regret expert, Tom Gilovich puts it, actions generate more regret in the short term, but inactions generate more regret in the long term. You can probably think of tons of examples of this. Asking that girl out, having a kid, getting divorced, trying that business idea, starting a YouTube channel. But wait, awareness is bliss. So what if you're aware of a bajillion options to choose from? How do I pick the one that minimizes FOMO and regret? Luke Burgess's book, Wanting, helped me find the answer to this one. Use mimesis to your advantage. Monsieur Mimesis, René Girard, explains mimesis like this. Man is the creature who does not know what to desire, and he turns to others in order to make up his mind. In simple terms, we want what others want. Want evidence? How about this? The term FOMO first appeared in 2004, the same year as Facebook. Because social media spreads the fear of missing out like a highly contagious online sneeze. Before social media, you'd see rich and famous people on mass media, and you'd want what they want. But you'd also know they're out of your league. But social media allows us to follow people who are in our league. Neighbors, friends, peers, colleagues, enemies. We are wired to want what they want and compete with them over it. So the more you see on social media, the more you want. You become deeply infected with FOMO. It becomes a paranoia, like FOMO on acid. The obvious solution is to limit your social media exposure. Studies find that when young people are limited to just 30 minutes a day, they feel way better and way less FOMO. Duh. But that's not going to cure FOMO because fighting mimesis is just as hopeless as trying not to miss anything ever. So to use mimesis to your advantage, Luke Burgess sums it up like this. Everything boils down to choosing the right expert, i.e. find the right influencers. These are people you look up to, heroes, and anyone who inspires you to want the right things and act accordingly. So this may be a good time to suggest 
subscribing to the unconventional route? I think I share some useful ideas. Plus, it seems there's little risk that I'll become so successful that you'll feel FOMO from watching my rise. Anyway, whether or not I make the cut, the right influencers will instill in you the right type of FOMO, the one that I plan on fighting FOMO with. Focus on meaningful objectives. Pete Davis helped me discover this in his book, Dedicated. As he puts it, to overcome the fear of missing out, we have to make the jump from finding meaning through novelty to finding meaning through purpose. Because novelty is exciting at first and wears off over time. But purpose often starts out boring and grows more exciting as time goes on. Purpose. Big word. But even a small purpose can do the trick. Like the size of my YouTube subscribers list. Or Zach. I mean, sure, I'd like to join my friends on every adventure they go on, but I'd rather focus on raising a family and continuing to work to nudge people like you down your own unconventional routes. Sounds boring? From the surface, you might think so, but I found that the deeper I focus on meaningful objectives, the more unexpectedly rich the rewards are that I dig up. Because whereas fear of missing out leaves you chasing one dopamine hit after the other, focusing on meaningful objectives digs you a bottomless well of dopamine. And it's endlessly satisfying because as Michael Long and Dan Lieberman write about in their book, The Molecule of More, focusing deeply rewards the pleasure enjoying here and now neurons like serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphins, and your pleasure seeking pathways of dopamine. So I'm giving up competing with people in my league chasing after FOMO worthy anecdotes. I'm focusing on my own coherent, meaningful story. When you are content to simply be yourself and don't compare or compete, everybody will respect you. They may even see your meaningfully focused life and feel they're missing out. And maybe that'll inspire them to do the same. What do you think? If you're interested in fighting the fear of missing out with focus on meaningful objectives, I'll leave you with this one exercise. Ask yourself, what have been some of the most fulfilling experiences of your life? Your answers will give you clues on where to start finding meaningful objectives to focus on. And then you can start fighting FOMO with FOMO.